what I'd like to at least go over, ladies and gentlemen, is just kind of looking at some graphs. Now, previously, last quarter, or not last quarter, but last unit, what we, what we took a look at was um, parabolas and the shapes of parabolas. And if you guys remember, parabola, parabolas are quadratics. They can open up. They can open down, right? They can open up. They can open down, right? That's, you guys remember graphing them. OK. Now, the main important thing that we remember was when, when the number in front, that a, was positive, they opened up. When that a was negative, excuse me, they opened down. And that was really how we could determine if they were opening up or opening down before we got to graphing them. Then there's a couple other things that we looked at in the characteristics. And one of the main characteristics that we looked at or that we were worried about last unit was this point, which we call the vertex. And what was important about the vertex is what we found out about the vertex was when the graph opens up, that vertex was the minimum point, right? When the graph opens down, that vertex is the maximum point. Minimum, maximum, OK? So knowing that the vertex was 1, that's one way we used to graph it using vertex form. But it was also important as far as finding like the maximum height or finding the minimum height um, of the parabola. So that's what we have previously discussed. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at two other characteristics, or at least another characteristics of the quadratic. And what I want you guys to look at is the, the points where the graph crosses the x-intercept. Okay, So remember, this is the x-axis. That is the y-axis. right? And what I want you guys to think about here is something that's very, very important. If you guys were to look at this point, if I was going to say, hey, you know what, this point, um, I don't know what the x value is. But do I know what the y value is for any point that lies on the x-axis? Anybody want to raise their hand? Uh, dan, 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 dan. Yes? It's 0. Always 0. I don't know what this point is, but I know that it's 0. right? Because remember, the y-axis starts here, goes up as positive, down as negative. So at that value, which is the x-axis, y is always equal to 0. So let me write that down. y is equal to 0. Now, Grant, do you know when, what other time did we say y was equal to 0? We even did it in our quiz. When did we make y equal to 0? Yep, on that quiz. There was a problem where we had a y, and we said y was equal to 0. Do you remember what we did for that? Why we did that, or what type of problem we did that for? Do you see the problem with the y? The solving? Do you have the solving? Yep, that problem. It was y. And then you replaced y with 0. Why did we do that? What were you doing? What were you doing in that problem? Well, what was the directions? Solve. To solve, right? When you guys are solving a quadratic and you have the quadratic equal to y, or I said the quad, or instead of a y, it was an f of x axis. Whenever the quadratic was equal to f of x or equal to y, and I said solve, 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 what did you guys do? You replaced the y or the f of x with 0. 0 was equal to y, right? Now let's even think about that a little further. On that quiz, when you guys were solving, did you most often have two answers when you're solving? Yes. Almost always we had those two solutions, right? And I want you guys to make a connection. Look at how many x-intercepts this graph and this graph has. They have two. So guess what? The solutions of a quadratic are the x-intercepts. It's really important for you guys to understand that. Because on a test, I might say, hey, what are the x-intercepts? And you'll be like, oh, shoot, do I, need, do I have to graph it? No, you actually don't even have to graph it anymore. Now we're making the connection that Funyuns are not really good to eat at the beginning of the day, especially after you've already had sweet tarts and another bag of Funyuns. So and prob did you not have a brownie? And you had a brownie. Wow, OK. Um, but if I say just find the x-intercepts, of course you could graph it and see where the graph crosses. But you could also algebraically set your equation equal to 0 and solve. right? 
Solve by factoring or completing the square, which we've discussed, talked about so far. Solve it, and whatever those values are, those are the x-intercepts. That's a very, very important distinction for that. Does everybody see that? Does everybody agree with me or have any other further questions? No? OK. Now, the one last thing I want you guys to understand is these are all graphs of quadratics. More, uh, more, in most cases, we have only dealt with when there's two answers. However, did we, just, did we do an answer where there was actually only one? Yeah. Remember that x minus 1, where, was that, where you, some of you guys wrote x minus 1, e x equals negative 1, x equals negative 1. It was a duplicate answer. But in reality, there was only one value. That's what that graph would look like. And I don't think we covered, did we did completing the square with the square root of a negative number? No, OK. Well, it is possible to have no x-intercepts or no solutions. And that's what we're going to kind of be talking about today. So that 